going to talk about Schmidt's schema theory, um, just trying to explain how we learn and perform discrete perceptual motor skills. And um, it's actually published in 1975 and uh, it goes slightly against the open and closed loop theories that we've discussed previously. So what actually is schema? Uh, there's your definition, set of relationships between joint action and muscle contractions that can be adapted to produce a new technique or skill. Uh, I think adapted is really the key word there. Uh, so in games like badminton and tennis, we almost never repeat the same action uh, exactly. Um, if you consider this one movement here, you've got a shuttlecock coming at a certain pace, which may well be different the next time it comes at that angle. Um, different height, uh, different speed at which it's coming, yet the movement will look very similar um, when he's trying to play uh, this shot at the same area of the court. Um, you could also take into account a little bit a uh, fatigue factor during the game and all of those things build up to the fact that we can't possibly store uh, enough motor programs to deal with every single eventuality of pace, height uh, and fatigue for example. Um, so there is a basis upon which that motor, pro motor program is built and then we can adapt it and that in essence is schema theory. So there are two parts to schema theory that are crucial uh, to our understanding of why we produce certain movement uh, to uh, perform a skill. Our first uh, one of those is our recall schema and this happens before the movement and well, that's crucial because the second one recognition schema occurs during and, and after the movement. So stored information about how to produce a movement is what we use as the basis for our motor program and they are made up of initial conditions and the response specification. So we need a little bit more of an explanation of those two uh, different parts of recall schema, that's before the movement, so our initial conditions. Now put simply, that's what's going on as you're about to make your decision about what motor program you're going to use uh, or adapt. Um, so we've got a footballer here and he's on the ball and things that are um, available to him is where's the goal for example or his opposition, um, clearly not very mobile there, or his, where his teammates are and then he's got other conditions about how slippery it is, how wet it is, um, how he feels. So obviously this young man uh, feels pretty comfortable, doesn't feel fatigued, so he's set off on a sprint towards goal with the ball. And they make up the initial conditions, and that can be applied to any sport um, you like. You just have to consider what's around you and what's going on. Uh, the second part is our response specification. Now... That response is dependent on all these initial conditions and it, remember this is happening before the movement. So how quick I might need to go, where I need to pass the ball, what technique will produce the best results. Now obviously we've alluded to Paul Scholes before, he can use both feet, either side of his feet, but for someone like myself, uh, the technique which will probably produce the best results is to move the ball with the inside of my foot because that's the only technique I have mastered and indeed over five yards. But that response that I'm going to give takes in all of these considerations and again recall schema happens before the movement is carried out. Now uh, this recognition schema this is going to happen during and after the movement. Now during and after is crucial uh, when we're trying to understand why we're selecting a certain movement to respond to a situation and it all comes down to evaluation. You can evaluate some, whether something went well, you can evaluate whether something went poorly and that evaluation allows you to uh, then act uh, again if required or learn from it. So um, if you've been successful obviously that has certain ramifications and if you failed then um, you've made an error and you can also evaluate that and then learn from it. And we've got two aspects to it our sensory consequences, uh, that's our knowledge of performance, that's actually how something fell um, probably the best example is when you hit a hockey ball with a stick and the vibrations because you hit it very poorly um, act through the stick and also the fact that you um, don't feel particularly in the right position for it and then you have your response outcomes which is actually the result so did the hockey ball go where you would like it to um, or playing football you shoot did the ball go in the goal and so our recognition scheme is made up of these two 
aspects and quite simply the movement outcomes um, that's your knowledge of results and success or failure is key so for this chap who's conversion kicking uh, technique looks pretty good there head down uh, leg following through straight um, but if that ball went through uh, the posts uh, and he was happy with that uh, he would repeat that movement again um, in an attempt to uh, be successful again um, now that's okay if we are learning directly and we just want to succeed at a skill but where we'll find the more successful uh, athletes and indeed the elite athletes trying to optimize performance it, they want to know about the knowledge of performance that's a sensory consequence so did it look um, did it look right and um, how did it feel um, now the probably the best way to talk about that is is the golf swing um, taking some video footage have a look at how it um, how it appeared um, did it flow was it aesthetic um, and then how it felt to the golfer whether the hands felt on plane whether your swinging down to the ball felt correct all of that actually helps because as we know we can hit a golf ball um, along the floor and it still ends up next to the flag now that isn't really what you want but if all you cared about was knowledge of result then that would be um, fine and you just repeat the movement but actually we want the ball to travel in the air land next to the pin and that's where the knowledge of performance comes in so our recognition schema happens during and after the movement uh, so there we go schema theory um, recall and recognition and we have to know which one's before and which one's during and after